Hello. We will begin our lecture number two, East Asian Bronze Age. The prehistorical Stone Age was followed by an age named the Bronze Age due to the use of bronze by early humans. It was during the Bronze Age that the first Asian writing was invented and then used to record history. The earliest archaeological evidence of bronze being used in China dates back to the Erlitu culture, was from 2100 to 1800 BC of the Shia dynasty. The Shia dynasty, named after the Shia family, who ruled in succession over China, is referred to in the ancient Chinese historical chronicle called the Bamboo Annals and in the records of the Grand Historian by Sima Qin. Written records from the Shia dynasty do not exist. The earliest writing on Chinese history date to the dynasty that came immediately after the Shia dynasty called the Shang dynasty. Writings from this time have been discovered on bones that are referred to as the oracle bones. The Shang people continued to master the use of bronze. Southeast Asian knowledge of working with bronze, speculate historians, probably originated from China. Shia dynasty. Whether the Shia dynasty from 2070 to 1600 BC actually existed is debated among historians, since no contemporary documentary evidence has been discovered that date back to the Shia dynasty. Nonetheless, there are references to the Shia dynasty in various literature that were written significantly after the Shia dynasty reputedly ended and was replaced by the Shang dynasty. One ancient text in which the Shia dynasty is referred to is the Bamboo Annals. The Bamboo Annals records ancient Chinese history in a chronological order. It was written around 300 BC on slips of bamboo. These slips have not survived the passage of time. All we currently have is a 16th century AD copied version of the text. Another early literary reference to the Shia dynasty is founded in the records of the Grand Historian by Shima Chen, who lived from 145 to 90 BC. In 113 BC, he followed in his father's footsteps by inheriting the post of Grand Historian for Emperor Wu. A few years earlier, he had promised his dying father that he would write a history of China. He began chronicling China's history as the Imperial Grand Historian. In 98 BC, his work was abruptly interrupted when he publicly insulted the emperor by defending, in front of Emperor Wu, the Chinese general Li Ling, who had been defeated in battle. In retaliation, the emperor had Sima Chen imprisoned and castrated. Once Sima Chen was released from prison, he persevered in his promise to his father and completed the monumental work on ancient Chinese history called the Records of the Grand Historian. The records of the Grand Historian is divided into 130 chapters. In all, it is over 500,000 Chinese characters long. Sima Qin begins with the Chinese emperor called the Yellow Emperor, who is reputed to having lived around 2,500 years BC. The records end with Sima Qin's own time of the Han Dynasty, ruled by Emperor Wu. In the excerpt you will listen to Sima Chen refers to China's first dynasty, the Shia dynasty. The excerpt ends with the Han dynasty, under whose rule he lived under. Notice his explanation for why a dynasty is replaced by another. According to Sima Chen, when rulers of a dynasty lose their virtue, the gods of heaven will replace them with a more virtuous ruling family. This theory is called the mandate of heaven. According to a Catholic understanding, since God is all-powerful, he allows evil in the world, including permitting non-virtuous political regimes to exist, in order to draw forth a greater good that would not exist if God did not allow the regime to rule. As explained by Bishop Barron, with reference to St. Thomas Aquinas, without God allowing for the cruelty and vices of tyrants, there would be no virtue of the martyrs. God does not promise to deliver us from evil regimes, but he does assure us that he will be with us until the end of time, as one who became one of us and willingly suffered with us. And this excerpt is from the records of the Grand Historian. The government of the Shia dynasty was marked by good faith, which in time deteriorated until mean men had turned it into rusticity. Therefore, the men of Shang who succeeded the Shia reformed this defect through the virtue of piety, 
but piety degenerated until mean men had made it a superstitious concern for the spirits. Therefore the men of Jew who followed corrected this fault through refinement and order. But refinement again deteriorated until it became in the hands of the mean, a mere hollow show. Therefore, what was needed to reform this hollow show as a return to good faith. For the way of the three dynasties of old is like a cycle, which, when it ends, must begin over again. It is obvious that in the late Zhu and Qin times, the earlier refinement and order had deteriorated, but the government of Qin failed to correct this fault, instead adding its own harsh punishments and laws. Was this not a grave error? Thus, when the Han rose to power, it took over the faults of its predecessors and worked to change and reform them, causing men to be unflagging their efforts and following the order properly ordained by heaven. It held its court in the tenth month, and its vestments and carriage tops were yellow, with plumes on the left sides of the carriages. End of quote. In 1959, archaeologists working in China uncovered an ancient city called Erlitu. According to radiocarbon dating, the city dates back to 2100 to 1800 years BC. This situates these people squarely within the Shia dynasty. It has been proposed that Erlitu was a capital city of the Shia dynasty. This, though, has not been sufficiently determined. Artifacts belonging to this early people indicate that they had learned to how to make bronze into vessels and into other objects. Bronze is, by, is made by smelting copper and another metal or metals, which usually includes, includes tin in order to create bronze. Bronze is more durable than copper alone. Shang Dynasty The Shang people demonstrated great mastery in their use of bronze. Many bronze artifacts from the Shang dynasties have been discovered along with other objects of historical interest. For example, in 1976, Chinese archaeologists uncovered, unearthed, the tomb of Lady Hao, which contained many items of the Shang people. This finding was remarkable, since the tomb is intact and had not been robbed by gravediggers. Lady Hao may have been one of the wives of Emperor Wu Ding, who reigned from 1250 to 1192 B.C., the reason why this theory is proposed is because what was discovered in her tomb, including, but not limited to, oracle bones, human skeletons, bronze objects, jade objects, stone sculptures, and hairpins. The bones referred to above as oracle bones in Lady Howe's tomb were also discovered in many other places. During the 1800s, these bones were superstitiously seen as magical bones of dragons that when ground up could heal a person who digested them. This practice was discouraged when scholars noticed ancient characters etched into the bones. The translations of this system of writing has provided much information about the Shan people. The human remains unearthed from Lady Howe's tomb consisted of 16 men, women, and children who had been sacrificed. Human sacrifices during the Shang dynasty were discovered in other sites as well. Those chosen as sacrificial victims were killed in a variety of ways, including beheading, beating, and chopping to death. The oracle bones have given scholars data that explain these horrific practices. Humans were ritually sacrificed to appease the gods, especially the main god worshipped by the Shang kings called Shang Di. The Shang dynasty claimed that Shang Di lived in a heavenly city named Shang. When members of the Shang dynasty died, they supposedly joined Shang Di in his heavenly realm. Worship of Shang Di and lesser gods, therefore, entailed worshipping ancestors of the Shang. This enforced worship of the Shang Di minor gods and the ancestors of the Shang dynasty greatly helped to form a ritual that is prevalent throughout Asia, ancestor worship. Etchings on the oracle bones indicate that the Shang king consulted an oracle before choosing a date for the ritualistic sacrifices and ancestor worship. The oracle bones also record the king consulting oracles on more mundane matters, including marriage, when to hunt, who to appoint, and who to dismiss. In total, 155,000 oracle bone inscriptions with similar information have been studied. Almost every oracle bone has been dated to the Shang era. The great value Shang kings placed on divination 
also was an influential historical factor for the current widespread Asian practice of fortune-telling. The two Shang practices of ancient worship and divination, asserts Craig G. Benjamin, quote, are foundational ritual practices of East Asian culture, end of quote. The Shang dynasty, Benjamin explains, exerted tremendous influence, and I quote him, on the emerging concepts of Eastern civilization. I say Eastern rather than Chinese here because Chinese culture came to exert an enormous degree of influence over all the other states and civilizations of East and Southeast Asia, including obviously those in Korea, Japan, and Vietnam, end of quote. After Asia was evangelized by Christianity, ancestor worship was modified by Catholics. Instead of worshiping ancestors, which is a violation of the first commandment, since worship is due to God alone, Asian Catholics began venerating their ancestors by remembering them, praying for them, and at times praying to them as people ask the living to pray to God for them. Southeast Asian Bronze Age Around 2000 BC, Southeast Asia began making bronze instruments. Some scholars claim that the Southeast Asians learned bronze working from China. Another possibility is that Southeast Asians learn bronze making independently of China. Archaeologists have discovered cooking utensils, weapons, and other simple bronze items from this early East Asian period. About 1500 BC, the people of Northeast Thailand had mastered fine bronze making. And in your transcript, you will see a Vietnamese brought from the Vietnamese Bronze Age, a bronze drum. It was made around 1000 BC. God bless.